And now I'm going to show you a relationship between the degree of a polynomial and the number of x-intercepts the polynomial can have. Okay? Remember that there are these four equivalent um, properties. If, if you have a number r that's a real zero, then f of r is equal to zero. That's really the definition. If r is a real zero, it means when you plug it into the function, you get zero out. A consequence of that is that r comma zero is then an x-intercept of the graph, right? Which means r comma zero must be on the graph, and x minus r becomes a factor of your uh, polynomial. Okay, so we saw all those in the past. Now, um, so we're going to utilize this information. If you can imagine a polynomial function, I'll call it p of x, and let's say it has degree three for a moment. Okay. Well, if it has degree 3, then you could think of it in standard form as a sub 3 r to the third, I'm sorry, x to the third plus a sub 2 x squared plus a sub 1 x plus a sub 0. And that would give you all four terms of a third degree polynomial. However, if you were to factor that polynomial, it cannot have more than three factors. Three is the most number of factors it can have because when it gets factored out, the x's in the factors, um, those three x's must uh, multiply up to that largest power of three, okay? Um, so you could have, um, you know, x minus r1, x minus r2, x minus r3, where r1, r2, r3 are all real zeros. That's a possibility. Um, you also have to have some sort of leading coefficient here. So if you have x times x times x, that gives you your x cubed. That's a bad looking three. There we go. But you also have to have the leading coefficient. So we'll stick that on the outside. Okay. All right, so this would be maybe a factored form, a potential factored form. But what you can see is that the number of factors cannot exceed the degree. Now, it could be less than the degree if you had a repeated factor. We saw this in a previous example. Um, you could have a situation where you have maybe x minus r1 times x minus r2 squared. Well, here I have a repeated factor. It's the same factor twice, right? Squared. And so here I have fewer um, factors than the degree, which means I have fewer uh, real zeros and fewer x-intercepts. But I can't have more. Okay? I cannot have more factors than I have degree. The degree is the maximum. Okay. So there's a principle here. Um, these are possibilities. So the principle is that um, the, uh, the degree, well, I should say this, the number of real zeros cannot exceed uh, the degree. Okay, it cannot exceed the degree. I also mentioned in the past that you could have complex numbers as zeros to a polynomial. That's an option as well. But if you had complex numbers as zeros, then they would take up some of these factors and you would still have even less real zeros. Okay, so uh, it doesn't change this statement. Okay, so the, the greatest number of real zeros you could possibly have is the degree. Of the polynomial. Now if you consider this, let's look at the degree 3 situation. If you have a degree 3, as I wrote up here, then your graph, and we already know some things about a degree 3 graph, you know, it um, goes down to the left, up to the right, assuming your leading coefficient is positive, but it has some sort of you know, wobbling in the middle here, some turning. And the number of times it turns is dependent upon how many x-intercepts there could be. Okay, so in this case, a degree 3 cannot exceed 3 x-intercepts. So let's look at the most 
uh, the most x-intercepts, 3, and see what the graph would have to look like. Well, in order for your graph to go through the x-axis three times, it would have to go through coming from the bottom left. Then it has to turn around and go back to the x-axis somewhere. And then it would have to turn around again and go back through the x-axis. Okay. So you would have some sort of turning in two different places. You have it going, it increases, then turns to decreasing, then turns to increasing. Okay. That's the only real way to get three x-intercepts. Now there's a variety of ways to get two x-intercepts uh, or one x-intercept as well um, using the same um, the same degree or the same type of shape but basically the idea is there's going to be two places where this graph turns. One, two, these local max and local min values are what we call turning points. What you'll, what you'll see is that the number of turning points can never exceed the degree minus one. Notice for three x-intercepts, which is a third degree polynomial, you can only have two turning points. And that's gonna always be the case, that the number of turning points Again, I mentioned that turning points would be your local max and local mins. Uh, will never exceed the degree minus 1. Okay, so if your degree is n, right, if you have an n degree, then the turning points... Would, uh, would not exceed, they'd have to be less than or equal to n minus 1. Okay, so if you have a degree n, if you have a degree 5, for instance, the number of turning points could not exceed 4. All right, so we have a relationship now between the number of turning points, the number of x-intercepts, and the degree of the polynomial, and that's going to be very important moving forward. Now, you can have degree 3 polynomials that have fewer turning points or fewer x-intercepts, all based upon how these factors work out. If there are some repeated factors, if there are complex factors, um, you can have other situations, but you cannot have more than three. Okay. Um, if I sketch a quick graph to illustrate other um, degree 3 situations, you could have you could have a graph that looks like this. It's the same number of turns, right? Two turns. Um, you could have the, the x-intercept could go across right here. That would give you one x-intercept, okay? The x-intercept could, or the x-axis could go across right here, where it goes through and touches. Remember, a touching uh, a point, uh, sorry, an x-intercept where the graph touches the x-axis uh, has a repeated um, uh, a repeated factor that was one I, would, I erased here, but a repeated factor primarily where there's an even power, okay? Even multiplicity, we've talked about that before. Okay. And so you've seen now three different situations. You can have one, two, or three um, x-intercepts for an odd sorry for a third degree polynomial um, and this makes sense too when you think about linear and quadratic polynomials that we've looked at before if you had a degree one or linear well degree one has no turning points right a linear graph never turns it never goes up and then turns around right so degree one has zero turning points Right, n minus 1. If 1 is n, then 0 is n minus 1. And it has one x intercept, 1, 0. Okay, so those are all consistent. You can have as many as one real 0 and up to 0 turning points. Now, if I were to go to a degree 2, which is a parabola or a quadratic. Okay, degree 2, quadratic function, a parabola for its graph. 
uh, we've seen that they have one turning point right at the vertex so you get one turning point and you have up to two uh, zeros right up to two you could have two of them or you could have oh I missed <laughs> trying to hit the vertex there with that line um, you could have one x-intercept or you could have zero x-intercept depending upon where that graph is in relation to the x-axis okay up to two zeros zero one or two all right now with odd degree functions you're always going to hit the x-axis somewhere you can't have zero with an odd degree function because one tail goes down indefinitely and one goes up indefinitely so somewhere in there you have to hit zero with an even degree you could have the option for zero x-intercepts right? like we saw with the parabola if it doesn't come down all the way to the x-axis that's an option um, so zero is then an option for the number of um, real zeros in an even polynomial even degree polynomial okay okay um, so again we're looking at the relationship between the number of factors the number of x-intercepts number of turning points and the degree they're all related none of those things can exceed the degree and the number of turning points actually can't exceed one less than the degree